today I've gone ahead to upload a story about Nico Williams and um, I've seen someone come out in the comment section saying that uh, we are past this. Who tells you that we are past this? You think that you're not going to be doing news concerning transfers. I tell you, we are going to be doing those stories. And in a nick of time, we are going to be discussing stories of players that might be linked to Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, Liverpool, Real Madrid, Barcelona, PSG, Liverpool, name it, in the January transfer window. And today is the 13th, 12th of September, meaning that we are entering October and November and December, the talk is really going to be on. And guess what? We are going to be discussing huge, huge, huge stuff to see to it that everything really moves on as planned. Now, we are here to discuss about Alexandra Ishak as Arsenal, Arsenal's appetite to sign um, Ishak is really increasing. And they've gone ahead, obviously, put him on their list and they're monitoring him to see to it that obviously bring him on into the next level of their performances or their performances next season and Arsenal is also having lots of looks at other strikers and Fabrizio Roman is going to confirm that and welcome to this channel we are talking a Bentaku Tottenham Hotspur player is expected to be banned and then John Stones has come out and spoken hugely about how he felt when England missed out on the trophy of the some the trophy of the euros into the mix welcome to this channel this is the rokani media football and i this is um the channel that brings you your latest news and information about all other teams apart from manchester united you understand and then you can as well continue to subscribe because we want to hit 30, 000, we want to hit 30,000 subscribers before the end of this month and i know we can really hit that milestone you know i know it's really huge but i know we can really hit that milestone with you guys subscribing and uh, we are powered by mono gadgets dealers in brand new phones and brand new laptops and even if you want a used phone and used laptop from the united kingdom they'll be at your supply that is um mono gadgets call them on plus two five six seventy double nine double eight double six five whatsapp them on the same number follow them on tiktok go to your search bar and put in mono gadgets you'll thank me later after visiting their tiktok account and the rest is really gonna be history now we thank god for the gift of life the muslims we thank allah for the gift of life and let's get straight into the story of alexandra ishak and guess who is obviously getting at this story team news antiques you know him very well fly on the wall at arsenal and when you see this fly on the wall at arsenal you obviously have to really understand that it's really getting better and better and better he is that guy who breaks the news and really happens you understand and you remember he broke the deal he broke the story about raheem sterling but i'm not mistaken he broke it that arsenal might go in for raheem sterling and how did it end raheem sterling is now at arsenal and is expected to obviously make his debut this weekend as arsenal takes on tottenham hotspur now he has told us that i've been told alexandra isaac will be very very high on arsenal's list he's definitely someone i expect to revisit next summer if newcastle don't get europe you would imagine he would be angling for a move obviously <clears throat> huge huge story and i know many arsenal fans will be like why didn't we get him during the recently concluded summer transfer window i told you it was really known in the financial jurisdiction expenditure or spend of arsenal that is it all they had to do was to really minimize their budget and it's sort of it that they brought in david raya <coughs> for i think 30 million pounds they went in for carafiori i think carafiori went in for like 40 million pounds that is 70 and um michael merino went in for like I think it's like 35 million pounds that is like 105 million pounds neto came in on a loan so those are the players that asked me to sign and it shows you that they only had a budget of like 120 million pounds to spend and <clears throat> their budget they spent is like 30 million pounds less <clears throat> the amount of money that newcastle was willing to really let alexandra ishak leave and go ahead and be designed for any club liverpool had gone ahead to show huge interest in the player but they were known into the greatest position to obviously sign the player because of <clears throat> the financial restrictions and 
Arsenal was like, all right, we never went in for Jokares, we never went in for Victor Osimhen, but all in all, I would like to confirm to you that we will go for a striker next season. And that is Arsenal for you. Arsenal are like, next summer, we will go for a striker. And I won't be shocked if I told Arsenal go in for a striker during the January transfer window. That is it. Because it will depend on how the title race will be. If Kai Havertz hits the ground running and really scores those goals for Arsenal, maybe Jesus also comes in through, then Arsenal will be like, that's not going to be enough a striker. But I tell you, Arsenal can break the bank. I tell you, Arsenal can break the bank during the January transfer window and sign a centre forward. I tell you, because when you look at Alexandria Ishak, even the January transfer window, the deal is possible. Why is it possible? Because when you look at his contract, it really runs down. Um, it really runs down. It really runs down um, after um, it really runs down in 2028. Now, if the contract of Alexandra Ishak runs down in 2028, you know what we are talking about. That means Alexandra Ishak is left with um, like four years on his contract. And if Arsenal can break the bank and obviously go in and really get in this player, then the rest will be history. And what makes this possible too is that Arsenal have a lot to really sell. You know, you might find out that next summer Arsenal will sell Gabriel Jesus. And I know they can get in like 40 million pounds or 50 and they can use that to add to what they have to really get in Alexandra Isak into the mix. So I won't be shocked about this deal of Alexandra Isak really happening because Arsenal have the financial muscle to really let this deal really happen. We also went ahead, obviously have Paul Mason. I think he really once played for the club of Arsenal and he said that Newcastle have done well to keep Alexandra Ishak and Bruno Gumaris at the moment. If I was Chelsea or Arsenal, I would be breaking the bank for Ishak. If Chelsea got Ishak, they would be certainly for a top four finish. If Arsenal got him, they would win the league. And this is what he said. And um, I believe in Alexandra Ishak. He's really an exceptional player. He says if Arsenal gets him, they win the league. I'm one of those people who don't believe that what fails Arsenal to win the league is the centre forward. Because when you look at the game of Brighton, Arsenal had their number nine score them a goal. And Declan Rice went ahead to obviously spoil the night for the club of Arsenal. You get by exposing him to that stupid second book of offense. And such small margins, all fine margins, decide on who is really going to come up and really win the league. Now, if Arsenal doesn't win the league this season, like on a margin of two points, then it will be written all over the wall that who was responsible for them not winning the trophy. Some will say the referee. Others will come out and obviously pinpoint out to to what we call pinpoint out to what we call the people responsible you understand so that is the most touching bit about it so for me i believe that arsenal can sign alexandra ishak because if they happen to sign declan rice for 100 million pounds with the number of games increased into what we call the champions league because they're going to be playing eight into the like the group stages you know and more games have gone more two games i think are going to be added so those two games mean a lot of money and if at all arsenal really do the need for they will win if the arsenal proceed to go into the higher levels of the champions league they'll find themselves doing the needful to see that a lot comes and happens their way so i believe they'll have the money and it's written nowhere that I don't think that Arsenal really miss out onto a player like Alexander Isak because they don't have the money. I know the money will be there and they'll be doing the due diligence. So guys, I call upon for your reactions into the comment section below about Arsenal going back for Isak. Do you think it's the right move? Because you people are talking about Jokares, there is Victor Osimhen, there is Benjamin Sesko. Now, I don't know what your thoughts are about this. May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rock and David remains my name. A sign out for now. See you later. And um, good night. And we're obviously going to come up 
with the best of the best in the coming hours. We out.